Welcome to this demonstration of how the BD Marquis disposable core biopsy instrument is used to perform a transperineal prostate biopsy using the full freehand technique. Prostate biopsy is one of the most common urological procedures. However, a rise in antimicrobial resistant uropathogens, particularly those resistant to the commonly used quinolone pre-procedural prophylaxis, has led to a global increase in infections following traditional transrectal prostate biopsy. In contrast, a transperineal approach avoids introducing rectal flora into the prostate gland, reducing the risk of infection and the need for antibiotic prophylaxis. This procedure can be performed in an office setting using only local anesthesia. The equipment required for a transperineal prostate biopsy using the BD Marquis biopsy instrument is very similar to that already used during a transrectal approach, including the same endocavity ultrasound probe one would typically find in clinics where prostate biopsies are performed. The BD Marquis biopsy kit includes an 18 gauge biopsy needle and corresponding coaxial supplied in a single sterile pack. This integrated coaxial allows for a simultaneous local anesthetic delivery. The biopsy instrument is then passed through the coaxial sheath to obtain samples. During the procedure, the patient is positioned in a low lithotomy position. Depending on the clinician's preference, the perineal area is exposed for the procedure by either asking the patient to hold the external genitalia up onto the abdomen with a slight degree of tension or simply taping up the scrotum tightly to ensure sufficient tautness of the skin. The exposed perineum is prepared with antiseptic wash and draped. A preliminary digital rectal scan is performed to visualize the prostate gland, determine its depth from the perineal surface and measure its volume. At this point, the patient's anxiety may be assessed and supportive measures offered if needed. The two anticipated coaxial insertion sites are marked on the perineum anterolateral to the anus by marking a guiding point approximately 1.5 centimeters up from the anal verge at midline and then marking the two insertion sites 1.5 centimeters to the right and left of this guide laterally. Four 23 gauge syringes containing five milliliters of 1% lignocaine should be available for local anesthesia. The skin is prepared with a local anesthetic cream or spray. Next, approximately 2.5 milliliters of 1% lignocaine are injected into the skin on each side of the perineal midline. Then, a further 10 milliliters are injected into the deeper pelvic floor and periprostatic tissues, thus reaching the sensitive prostatic capsule. The sterile BD Marquis device package containing both the coaxial and the biopsy needle is opened. The coaxial is removed first and flushed with approximately 2 or 3 milliliters of saline solution. The ultrasound probe is angled 30 degrees right or left towards the first marked insertion site to provide guidance as the coaxial is inserted. Patient feedback at this point is helpful in assessing whether any further local anesthesia is required in specific areas. Once the coaxial is placed at the apex of the prostate, a syringe is attached to administer further local anesthesia at the apical junction and then removed. The coaxial will remain in place to conduct the remaining steps of the prostate biopsy from the first side of the prostate before progressing to the contralateral side. Therefore, only one skin puncture is required per side. The BD Marquis device is then prepared by pulling back twice, ensuring the fire indicator is completely blue. The first pullback opens the aperture and the second fully loads the device ready for fire. The 18 gauge biopsy needle is inserted through the coaxial device. Here are shown the two insertion sites which are already positioned over the peripheral zone 
illustrating where the inserted biopsy needle should be pivoted from this initial position to extract biopsy samples from the anteromedial, anterolateral, posterolateral, and posteromedial zones to obtain 18 cores or more if required using a template-guided technique. The coaxial is directed to collect samples under ultrasound guidance. Once in position, the A button on the BD marquee device is engaged to collect the sample. Then the lever is pulled back once to expose the sample notch and the sample is extracted from the open aperture. The BD marquee device's freehand movement allows easy access to the various sample areas. The ultrasound probe and coaxial should remain parallel to ensure visibility at all times. The patient may be asked to adjust their position to help redirect the approach. The core biopsies are collected systematically, starting with the area of interest, while checking the quality of the cores. Cores are typically 18 millimeters in length, although cores from the lateral regions may be shorter than those from the other regions. Due to the flexibility of the perineal skin and subcutaneous tissues, all samples can typically be obtained via the two contralateral insertion sites. However, in the unusual case that the coaxial requires repositioning via an additional puncture site, a little more local anesthesia may be administered before reinserting if needed. Once the first set of cores is collected via the first insertion site, the procedure is repeated on the contralateral side, after which the coaxial is withdrawn and a standard plaster or simple dressing is applied. When liaising with a pathologist regarding the prostate biopsy, remember to relay the type of specimen, biopsy number and site, clinical context, and the patient's prostate-specific antigen screening result, and biopsy and treatment history. After the procedure, the patient is sat up and observed for up to an hour to ensure a full recovery. Aftercare is explained to the patient in detail before discharge. Procedural time is generally 20 to 30 minutes, and the office visit is approximately two hours. A follow-up appointment is arranged within a week to review the biopsy results.